Hello and welcome back to AB 474 Indoor Environmental Control. In this video um, we are going to cover some supplemental information to um, our course textbook. Um, I feel like we've, we um, cover a number of topics uh, individually but we don't necessarily tie them all together directly so I want to spend a few minutes just thinking about putting together a number of the concepts that we're covering in this course. Um, I've also provided to you uh, a chapter uh, from the Albright text on, and it's on the wiki uh, that covers this a little bit. But essentially we're going to put together um, a number of different concepts into an overall energy and mass balance for our system. Um, so first let's start by asking several questions that we um, might want to answer as we're working through uh, an environmental control system as we're working through the analysis and and you know eventually moving toward a design of uh, an environmental control system. So here are some questions that we we might want to um, ask of our system. Um, so under a given set of conditions, what will be the inside temperature? You know, at this point we have all the tools to do this, but we haven't put them together. So another question we might want to ask, how much heat will be needed? So how much heat do we need to supply in order to maintain the system at a set point temperature? How much, uh, how much ventilation do we need and how many fans will be needed to supply that ventilation? Or what size of fan will be needed? What size should my cooling system be? And so within the course, like I said, we've covered enough information to do all of these, but we have yet to put it together in uh, an overall analysis. So um, the approach that we're going to take in order to put it together and begin to solve this type of question is called a steady state energy and mass balance. And at this point in your um, engineering studies, you've seen this before, so it shouldn't be a surprise. Uh, but this is a nice way to uh, tie together all the things that we've looked at in this course. Um, and like I said, it's covered in Albright Chapter 5, which I have shared with you on the course wiki. So we have some ventilation air that's going in and some ventilation air that's coming out. Um, we have some solar energy that's coming onto the outside of our building. Uh, we have some energy transfer through the building, through the walls, plus the roof, plus the floor. Um, or we could call that the building envelope, PE. Um, and we have some things happening inside. We may have some energy that's being generated uh, from our occupants, so sensible generation, uh, mechanical generation. And so these are all generations within the building. Um, and then our heaters, where we may be supplying some, some energy as well. So let's take a look at an overall equation. And in general, when we do uh, an energy or mass balance, the equation looks like this. Our gains are equal to our losses. Um, so in this scenario, in our um, building system, uh, what are our gains? So we can have gains from the occupant, so that's QS. This is going to be sensible gain. from equipment, so mechanical gain, especially if you have something like a computer room or in an industrial setting where you have a lot of machines running, you can have significant mechanical gains. You have some energy that's gained from the sun, from any heating equipment that you uh, are running, so supplemental heating is what we're going to call that. 
and then the energy from the air that you're bringing into the building, so from your ventilation air that's coming in. Okay, And that is going to be equal to our losses, so where are we losing energy in our building? So through the building envelope, so this is going to be a heat transfer through the building envelope. which is comprised of our walls, and our roof, and our floor. Potentially, we could have uh, some losses through evaporation. This is most uh, mostly significant if we were working in a greenhouse system. And then, energy due to ventilation that's leaving. So, ventilation out. Right, and this is our overall governing uh, energy and mass balance equation uh, that brings together all the pieces that we've talked about. And as we take a look at this, you can see that in the various chapters we covered uh, where does sensible energy come from. So think chapter four where we talked about comfort. We talked about solar. That was um, the, the, the last chapter that we covered in chapter six. Um, supplemental heating. We've talked about ventilation in and out. We've talked about in, in chapter five, we talked about... Um, heat transfer through the building. So now it's time to put those together into an overall analysis of our system. So let's work through an example problem. That kind of ties this together. We're going to be asked <coughs> to calculate the ventilation rate. So when we're using the energy, the overall energy and mass balance equation, we have to have knowns, but we can solve for, given those knowns, we can solve for a variety of different unknowns. So there's not just one way to use that equation. And those original questions that we pose can all be solved using this approach. Alright, so we are asked to calculate the necessary ventilation rate for temperature control for outdoor conditions at minus 10, 0 and 10 degrees Celsius. And we're going to be given some things, or in this case I'm just going to be told to assume. So you could have solved for each of these individually. But the idea here is to demonstrate using the energy mass balance and not calculate each of the individual things. So. All right, so we're given values for our overall heat transfer coefficient through our building, uh, a desired indoor temperature, solar load coming onto just the roof, uh, the area of the roof, the sensible generation by your occupants, and the density of the air. We are going to assume we don't have supplemental heating, we're going to assume we don't have a mechanical contribution, and we're going to assume that uh, our row and our CCP are constant uh, for our conditions. All right, so now we're going to put that into our energy and mass balance. So let's again review our equation. So sensible energy gain plus mechanical plus solar plus supplemental 
plus what's coming in due to ventilation is equal to uh, transfer through the building envelope plus anything due to evaporation plus ventilation that's leaving the building. So that's an O there. All right, and then we know that we don't have um, mechanical, we don't have supplemental heating, uh, and unless we're working with plants, the evaporative losses are not significant. So now let's solve our equation for uh, the ventilation, which is what we're the most interested in, uh, and get everything else on the other side. And then we can uh, substitute in for these any relationships that we know. So we know that this relationship about ventilation air, uh, the difference in what's coming in and leaving, is related to uh, the air conditions entering and leaving, uh, multiplied by the ventilation, uh, the amount that's coming in and leaving. And then we know our relationships for solar coming onto the roof and heat transfer through the building. And we can solve this equation for ventilation rate. And pay attention to your sign conventions as you uh, work through these problems and make sure that the energy is transferring the direction you expect it to be transferring. Also, um, just kind of a note as you saw for, for uh, these various things, uh, one of the common mistakes I see students make uh, when they're solving for ventilation rate in this equation is that uh, in minus out and out minus in are, are reversed for these two um, based on which way you're solving for it, so just pay attention to that. All right, so then it's just a matter of plugging in our values. Uh, so at minus 10 degrees Celsius, uh, we get, uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and give you the solution, and you can work out the values on your own and see if you agree. 2.1 meters cubed per second at zero. we get 3.3 meters cubed per second okay and so this is how we would solve for ventilation rate I'm going to extend this out just a little bit to talk about maybe why we looked at ventilation rate at the various temperatures um, so we're going to add on a, a few more assumptions here and then we're going to take a look at what we call ventilation curves. So if our ventilation rate to control for CO2 were, for example, 3.48 meters cubed per second, if our ventilation rate to control for moisture um, at each of those temperatures You would need more information to solve for these each individually, but at this point you should have the knowledge and the skill to solve for each one of them. So in our case we solve based on temperature uh, and controlling for temperature, but we could solve this same idea for controlling for a specific gas or controlling for moisture. Um, so we have these various requirements for ventilation and we need to have a way to tie them together to determine which ventilation rate we're actually going to choose uh, for our given scenario. Let's see here. Go. All right, so we're gonna create what's called a ventilation curve. And on the x-axis, for our scenario, we're going to use outdoor temperature as our um, independent variable, and we have values at negative 10, 10, and negative 10, 0, and 10, um, and we have um, 
on our y-axis, we have the ventilation rate that's um, required. All right, so the first curve that I'm going to draw um, is the ventilation rate for CO2. And the ventilation rate for CO2 is um, uh, consistent. Uh, for the most part, it's consistent, so it's going to be 3.45 regardless of the outdoor temperature. Right, so I'm going to put it on here. That's our ventilation curve for CO2. That's the required ventilation to make sure that the CO2 concentration doesn't rise above a certain level. Um, and then the next curve I'm going to draw on here is the, the ventilation rate for moisture. Um, and so for at minus 10, we're a little bit below. At zero, we're a little bit above. Probably not exactly uh, to scale here, but we're a little bit above. And then here we're 4.87, so we're a little bit more above. All right, and then we're going to connect that. Okay, and then the third curve we're going to put on here is our ventilation rate for temperature. And it's the lowest at the coldest, and it is 3.3. So we're still below almost in exactly the same spot here. And then 4.8 and we're all the way up here. Okay. And for temperature control, this is our ventilation rate. Okay, so for each of our outdoor conditions, we have three choices um, for what ventilation rate to use. And the way we make a decision about which ventilation rate to use we choose the one that meets the needs of all criteria. So what does that mean? It meets the needs of all criteria. So um, our minimum ventilation is the highest of the three. So if you ventilate at less, at one of the lower ones, then you'll be under ventilating for this, for whatever is the highest. So for example, um, at negative 10, CO2 is your um, controlling factor, and so you, ha you need to ventilate uh, with as much ventilation as required to control for CO2. Because if you ventilate at less, the CO2 concentration will rise. Right. And at zero, it looks like we're going to be controlling for moisture. And at 10, we'll be controlling for temperature. So your actual ventilation curve, or your ventilation required curve, it's going to look something like this. So then you have the next question, which is, uh, if you're ventilating for CO2, then you're overventilating for temperature and overventilating for moisture. Um, there isn't a lot of implication for moisture. Um, it could be that your air ends up getting drier, but usually that's not a huge problem. Um, you kind of pay attention because it could be. Um, but for temperature, you're overventilating for temperature, meaning that the temperature in your barn is going to be reduced. Um, so Whenever you uh, are ventilating for something that's higher than temperature, it means that you may need to consider supplemental heating. So anything that is above the temperature curve. So this is the area where you require supplemental heating. in order to maintain your set point temperature. Okay, you can extend that further and um, we'll do a quick example looking at calculating the amount of supplemental heating that's required.
carry that forward. First, let's go ahead and just re reiterate. So when the ventilation rate is greater than that required for temperature control, either you have to accept that your temperature will be less than your set point or you need to provide some supplemental heating. Another example problem. And in this problem, we're going to calculate the supplemental heating using our energy and mass balance. It's going to look similar to the example problem we just worked, but in this scenario we're going to be solving for supplemental heating. So if we take our energy and mass balance equation, we solve it for supplemental heating. And then we are going to say we don't have any mechanical and no evaporative losses. Um, and then just kind of remind ourselves this VO and VI. Um, it's another place where I frequently see students and myself get confused about which value is which. So just to remind ourselves the temperature of the air inside the barn is the temperature of the air that's leaving the barn. So it goes with the V. Alright, so let's plug in our, um, substitute in our relationships for each of our energy gains and losses. looks very much like our last problem um, and then if we plug in the values so the difference this time is that we know the ventilation rate then we can solve for the supplemental heat required for each of these outdoor conditions And in this case, we assumed that our ventilation rate was the same for each of the outdoor conditions, just to simplify the problem. Um, and then, if you notice, at negative 10 degrees Celsius, we have somewhere around 48 kilowatts required. At zero degrees Celsius, around four kilowatts required. And if we get up to uh, 10 degrees Celsius, we have a negative value for our supplemental heat required. And what that really means is that we don't need any supplemental heat. All right, and so that is um, two examples of using our energy and mass balance in order to um, uh, 
uh, better understand the needs of our uh, system and to assist with uh, bringing together all the pieces of things that we've learned. Um, one thing that we haven't looked at yet uh, in terms of this energy mass balance is infiltration losses. If you want to include infiltration losses, these act as a contribution to your ventilation rate uh, or your gains. So whenever we're looking at uh, this V dot, um, then you would consider that the infiltration is a part of this. Um, so if you, in, in the two problems that we worked, we didn't consider infiltration losses at all. But if you want to build them in, you need to, um, uh, you could create a new variable in there or you can just combine it with the ventilation rate. Um, it essentially is acting at, as additional ventilation. Um, and with that, I think that's going to wrap up the um, supplemental piece uh, to help us tie together the things from this class. I hope you've enjoyed all of the um, uh, topics we've covered this semester and have a better understanding of um, indoor environmental control and indoor environmental control systems.